We started last week talking about our new theme for the year. Like every year we do a theme. Last year we did the desire of the Holy Spirit and seeking out what the Holy Spirit's desire is for us. And this year we are doing the theme of the Logos of Jesus, looking for the Word of Jesus. We're going to look all over the Bible and find words from Jesus because we have this idea that sometimes Jesus just spoke in the Gospels. But he didn't. He spoke all over the Bible. And we're going to talk about the Logos of Jesus, which means the word of Jesus, the logic of Jesus, the meaning of Jesus, the purpose of Jesus. Today, though, we will be looking at a gospel story, which we heard read to us very well by Wayne. And my sermon is entitled, What You Looking For? And my sermon is entitled that for a reason. Sometimes people who believe in God, now I'm not just talking about people who don't believe in God and people who are on the outside, but, but stay with me. Sometimes people who believe in God, sometimes people who are serving God, sometimes people who are in connection with God, still don't know what they're looking for. And it can create this sense of emptiness, this sense of longing, this, this, this spiritual frustration, like, you know, I'd rather have Jesus, and I came to the altar, and, and, and I'd rather have him than fame or glory, you know. And, but, but what now? Wasn't when I signed up to go with the Logos, when I signed up to go with Jesus, wasn't I promised more than this? Now, this next slide, my first slide that I'm about to show you, will, will, will tell me who was trendy in the 80s and 90s. It's kind of a, a pop culture test for you. And, and, and my, 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 my bet, Marvin, is no one's going to say anything. Let's see if I'm wrong. If, if you know who this is when I do this slide, just say it out loud. I, I don't know, Marvin. I'm nervous now. We got a few hip people here. <laughs> now the people at the back are beginning to hear you, and they're going, you too. <laughs> now, you too... In, in pop music from about the mid-80s to the mid-90s, and pop rock music were the go-to band. Um, Bono, who was the lead singer with the red sunglasses on, was like a world celebrity. And here's something you maybe don't know. There are four men in that picture, three of them. All the time that we have known them in the public persona, are extremely dedicated, faithful Christians. And they have had their faith tested being in the spotlight. They have had their faith tested being on the world stage. They have had their faith tested by things they've done, places they went. But they're very dedicated Christians, three of them. The bass player in the band is not a Christian as of last I knew. But everybody else in the band including Bono. In fact, Bono, in his later years now, is like doing Bible readings for like audio Bibles. <laughs> and, and Bono says something in one of his big songs that, you, you know, I, I don't sing Marvin, so you know that. <laughs> and, you, and the congregation just say, amen. <laughs> but, but one of his lyrics, he says, you know, I'm paraphrasing him here because I can't get it on the screen. He says, I've climbed the highest mountains, I've ran across fields, I've, I've, I've scaled the walls, but I still, I still just can't find what it is that I'm looking for. You know, the song goes on about falling in love and, and going all over the globe and basically what his life was. And he's like, I still, it's like there's still something I can't put my hand on that I'm still looking for. 
And then it's like you go through the song, like verse one, chorus, right, Marvin? Verse two, chorus, right, Marvin? And, and then you get to the, the, the last verse. And listen, listen to what he says in the last verse. I believe in the kingdom come. Don't, don't worry about my typo. Those are supposed to be dots. <laughs> I believe in the kingdom come. And yet, I'm still running. You hear what he's saying? I believe in the key to come, and yet I'm still running. You have broke my bonds, and you have loosed my chains. You carried the cross of shame. Oh, my shame! You know I believe it. And back to the chorus, right, Marvin? But I still haven't found. Who knew there was such religiosity in pop lyrics in the 90s? Actually, it's 87. Who knew, right? Who, who knew how there could be different levels of religiosity all over the place that our eyes are closed to? Do you hear me? Our eyes are closed to because we don't know what we're looking for. And this is exactly what was going on in Jesus' day. In Jesus' day, they had all kinds of religiosity. They had all kinds of, of, of rituals. They had all kinds of, of, of spiritual experiences and, and, and levels of clergy and disciples and masters and rabbis and Pharisees and, and Sadducees and lawyers and, and all of it. But on a whole, the people of God were empty. Because it's not ritual, it's not formality, it's not even habitual practices that we find meaning in. And so they had their rituals, they had their formality, they had their structure, but they couldn't, they just kept saying like Bono, I still can't find. what I'm looking for. And so John the Baptist, he goes out into the wilderness and he says, he goes out in the wilderness, he says, why did you come out here following me? What were you looking for? Um, so he goes out into the wilderness and these people are following him and he's like, what are you looking for? And so, like, all these religious leaders who were supposed to be following him, who, who were supposed to be trying to understand what was going on, they came to John and they're like, who are you? We're the religion. We're the people. We're the rulers. But people find no meaning in us. But you, John, they've followed you out into the desert. Who are you? Now, Israel got themselves into a big problem. It was a really big problem because John, the people became to believe, was a prophet. But the leaders didn't believe John was a prophet. But then the people would say to the leaders, if John's not a prophet, why, when he says things, does it satisfy my heart? You know, why, when he says things, does it resonate with me? But when I go to the synagogue, I get nothing. So these leaders, they're out there, and they're saying, who are you? Because we are the most religious nation on earth, and people find no meaning with us. But you, they follow out into the middle of a desert. And so John says, look, I'm just going to tell you straight up. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not who you think I am. I'm not the Christ. I know your heart, and I know you're worried that I'm the Messiah. <laughs> and I know you think I'm going to take your flock, but I am not he. And then they're like, so are you Elijah? And he's like, no, 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 <laughs> I'm not Elijah. <laughs> and so they're like, well, then, are you a prophet? <laughs> no, 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 I'm not a prophet. 
So then they're like, I got to know. Who are you? Because I've been sent out here by the high priest, and I got to go back, and I got to give a report as to who you are and why you have got all the people of Israel following you out in the desert. John's answer doesn't come until he sees Jesus on the bank of the river. And he says, behold, behold, behold the Lamb of God. That's what you're looking for. That's what they're looking for. That's what can't be found in institutionalized structures. That's what sometimes you may have to go into the desert of your life to find. That's what the people were looking for was the Lamb of God. And so, 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 so John begins to say crazy things that make no sense to people who are into status. To, to people who are into hierarchy, to people who are into popularity, to people who are into to, to being noticed. He begins to say, look, it was never about me. It was always about him. I must decrease. He must increase. It's, it's never about me because here's the thing. Here's the thing about John. This is the thing we can't miss about John. John knew what it was he was looking for. Now, John didn't disbelieve in synagogues, and John didn't disbelieve in the Sabbath, and John didn't disbelieve in any of the core teachings, but John just said, there's got to be more to my faith than religiosity. There's got to be more to my faith than showing up between 11 and 12, 15 and rushing out to the parking lot. John said, there's got to be more to my faith. I will go out into the desert. I will lead people out in the desert. I will do what I need to do. But there must be more. And, and the truth is, when he saw it, he knew it, and he pointed the crowds to it. Now, listen, church, because you got to get this. It's core to what we say we're about every week when we talk about our mission, our vision, and our values. And we talk about that we're going to make disciples of all the nations. For who? For Christ, right? You're not leading any place or anyone any place if you haven't found what you're looking for. Jesus said, can the blind lead the blind? But John knew. John knew. And when he saw it, he knew it. John knew it before he saw it. You know how I know that? You don't go out in the desert, wear uh, camel hair, and eat bugs. Locusts. Unless you're pretty sure you know God's call. Now, there are people who love Jesus enough, and they know what they're looking for enough, that they travel all over the place in the name of Jesus, and go through all kinds of things for the name of Jesus, but sometimes we can't get to this new refresh group that pastor's talking about. And certainly don't ask about Sabbath school or anything else. But John, he knew. He would go wherever he had to go. And so the story picks up where uh, Wayne was reading, and I'm going to start in verse 35. It says, the next day, again, John was standing with what? Two, Two of what? Whose disciples were they? John's. That's very important because when we see the word disciple, we think of the 12 guys and, and they're Jesus. No, John is standing with his disciples because Jesus has not shown up yet. And they are following John, not Jesus. And he's with his two disciples. And he looked at Jesus when he walked by and he said, Hey, disciples, I know you think I'm rabbi. Hey, disciples, I know you think I'm teacher. Hey, disciples, I know you think that I am master, but behold the Lamb of God. Yes. 
And let me tell you, you are not safe with any religious leader who thinks they are teacher. You are not safe with any religious leader who thinks he's master or rabbi. You can only be safe with any religious leader who says, Behold the Lamb of God. And that's what we follow. Amen. So John is not into keeping power based like the, the, the religiosity of the time. John is into building disciples for Jesus, kind of like solid rock. And the two disciples heard this, and they did what? They followed who? It's not just him. Are you reading it? These two people stopped being disciples of John. And at this point, became disciples of of Jesus. Now, now, now watch what Jesus says to them. And Jesus turned and he saw them. And he said to them, what? What are you seeking? There's our logos today. This is our logos meet today. These are Jesus' words today in this sermon to you. It doesn't matter if you started following Jesus three minutes ago, three years ago, or three decades ago. Jesus' logo to us today is what are you seeking? What are you looking for? Why are you here? What do you want? Because this is the thing. Those two disciples of John, one who was Andrew, they've been good Jews their whole life. They went to the rabbi's schools. They learned the rabbi's lessons. They memorized the Old Testament because that was required for elementary school to memorize the Old Testament from memory. They were not unreligious people. But Jesus looks at them and says, do you really know what you're looking for? And, 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 and I find this exchange very interesting. And they said to him, what? Rabbi. Which means what? Teacher. Teacher. You see, John did his, good job, his job good. John was a good missionary. John was a good, solid rocker. He handed them off to Jesus. And John fulfilled the mission statement. He made disciples for who? For Christ, not for John. Not for the rabbis. Not for the synagogue. For Christ. Because they say, you're a teacher. You're a rabbi. And then what do they say? Where are you staying? Now, that's a pretty important question that they asked Jesus because they just met this guy. Like, literally, you think about what the text said. Jesus was walking by John. <laughs> that's what the text said. And John's like, that guy, he's the one we're waiting for. <laughs> and they're like, well, let's go. Where are you staying at? <laughs> They didn't even know what they'd found. But when they found it, they were not willing to let it go. And, and this is what I want to talk about. Like, this is, this is the logos. What are you seeking? You, know, you don't have to know everything about Jesus to follow him. You don't have to learn everything about Jesus up front to follow him. You just got to recognize him as Lord. You just got to recognize him as Christ. You just got to recognize him as Savior. You just got to recognize him as Rabbi. You just got to recognize him as Teacher. And then you have to follow him. And the things that you're going to find as you're following him 
are the things that are going to go on forever in your walk. And they don't ever fully get answered. They get asked deeper and different John was out in the desert seeking for Jesus, not because he didn't know what he wanted, but because he knew what he wanted. And so it's not wrong to seek, to, to, to seek even while you're following. So he said to them, come and you will what? See. You see, sometimes we don't see because we don't look. Sometimes we don't see because we don't know that we should be looking. Sometimes we can't see because it's not in our eyesight. So they came to where he was saying, staying, and they stayed with him how long? That day until about the 10th hour, so about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, for those who don't read Greek time. <laughs> basically, they spent the day with him. They basically st stayed with Jesus. Now, here's the thing I want to say. I, I was at one point in my life, and I was really trying to figure out God's direction for me, and I, I was really struggling, and I was, I was talking to a good Christian counselor who I really trusted, and, and, and we were talking back and forth, and, and, and one day he just says to me, out of no place, he says, I know you're a Christian, and I don't doubt that you're following Jesus. And I don't doubt that there's not a, like, things are good with you and Jesus. There, I don't have any doubt about that. But then he looked me right in the eye and he said, do you know what satisfies your soul? Do you know what quenches your thirst? Do you know what takes away your hunger pain? Do you know what it is that makes you happy? Do you know how it is that Jesus has designed you? Not people, not theology. Do you know what it is about you, in you, in your makeup, that Jesus is seeking to complete in you? And he said something to me. You don't know what you're looking for. Jesus may already be giving it to you. And it can walk right by you. Unless someone says, behold, the Lamb of God. Now, because John knew what he was looking for. Now, now, I'm not just talking about religiosity. He believed in God. He believed in the scriptures. He'd memorized the scriptures. But he went out in the desert and was doing what you and I consider crazy things in his search of Jesus. And I'm sure his family's like, what's wrong with John? Someone go talk to him and tell him to stop eating those bugs and come in. I'm sure that happened, right? You know it. But John knew what he was looking for. Now, now, now don't, if you miss this, you're going to miss everything. Because, because John knew what he was looking for. He was able to tell Andrew and the other disciple, who we don't know this name and we're not told. He was able to tell Andrew and the other disciple what it was they needed. Right? And, and then they went and they spent the day with Jesus. And you know what happens? Andrew comes back and he goes to Simon. And he says to Simon, I have found the what? The Messiah. And Simon leaves everything to follow Jesus. And Jesus says to Simon, from now on, your name will be Petras. From now on, your name will be Peter. Whenever God changes someone's name in the Bible, it means he's really changed a transformation within them. Abraham to Abraham. Sarai to Sarah, Jacob, liar, thief, manipulator to Israel, chosen of God, Simon to Petros, little rock. Why? John went into the desert to eat bugs because he knew what he was looking for. He was able to point Andrew and the other disciple 
to what they needed to be looking for because he knew what he was looking for. And then they were able to go get Peter and, and, and point him to the Messiah because now they knew what they were looking for. Do you see what's happening? They're making disciples for Christ of all the nations. Literally, when we get into the book of Acts. Because John knew what he was looking for. So there's this comedian. His name is Russell Brand. I don't know if you guys know him. This is my pop culture day, I guess. We went from U2 to Russell Brand. There is a theme. They're all British. Now, I would advise you not to Google Russell Brand and not to look up his humor on YouTube because his humor on YouTube is some of the most vile and crude humor that is not fit for our ears. Russell was famously married to Katy Perry, who you may know, but he was like, uh, head personality for the British version of the MTV, stand-up comedian, all kinds of big deals, parts in movies, and a drug addict. A drug addict that highly managed his addiction through other addictions. When drugs got too bad, he could shift to women. And when women got too bad, he could shift to alcohol. And by the time alcohol got too bad, he could go back to drugs. In his whole career long, he says, he probably wasn't sober. <laughs> Until it got to the point that everything came crashing down. He went into rehab. He joined a 12-step program. I read about a story. Like, when I see Russell Brand's face, like, this is terrible of me. I just think, there's someone I want to listen to. Like, I just shut off right away because I've, I've come across him on Netflix and different things. I'm like, ah, no, no. But this time I came across his face on a Christian magazine. And I was really interested. And you know what Russell said in this Christian magazine, Relevance? You know what he said? He said, I wasted my whole life. And he begins to talk about the rich young ruler who had all the money, all the fame. And, 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 and Jesus says, why don't you give it all up and follow me? This is what Russell says. Russell says in this article, now this article you can Google, Relevance Magazine, he says in this article, I wish someone would have pointed me to Jesus. He says, I wish someone would have pointed me to Jesus because I can tell you all the success, all the fame, all the riches, I would rather have my sobriety with Jesus. I will give it all up now, and I wish someone would have told me, and I could have given it all up then. He tried everything. He was into Buddhism. He tried transcend meditation. He, he, he looked every place for something that could heal the brokenness that was inside of him. He said, I just wish I knew what it was all those years that I had been looking for. but I have it now. And no matter what happens in my career, thank God I have my sobriety. And my sobriety is not worth my career. So my sobriety is not worth my women. My sobriety is not worth my fame. And here's a quote. Here's, a, here's just part of that magazine article I want to read to you. Here's what he says. He says, I say the Lord's Prayer every day. I try to connect. I want those words to, to what I want those words to mean. I connect to what the Father, I want to connect to what the Father means. I think about the relationship between forgiveness and being forgiven. And the impossibility of redemption until you're willing to forgive and let go yourself. 
it goes on to say, if Christ's consciousness is not accessible to us, then what's the point of the story of Jesus? You know, is he just some sort of scriptural rock star? Just some sort of icon? Unless Christ is right here, unless Christ is right now, he's talking discipleship, right? He's talking follow, he's talking going into the desert, right? Unless Christ is right here, unless Christ is right now in your consciousness, then what is Christ? Now listen to what he says here. This might be a little bit controversial, but it's point on. Listen to what he says here. Every man who ever knocks on a brothel door is looking for God. He says, crack houses and those dens of suffering and illicit activity, they are all people trying to feel good. Trying to feel connected. People who are trying to escape. People who are trying to get out of their heads. People, to me, this is spiritual impetus, spiritual power. Spiritual force. People do great evils in the name of spirituality. And people who are Christians sometimes do nothing in the name of spirituality, but both are cause for the same reason. You can be spiritual and still not know what satisfies you. You can be spiritual and still not know what you're seeking. You can be spiritual and still not know how you're designed and to do what. And the answer was in Andrew's words to Jesus. Where are you staying? Where are you staying? What are you looking for? They didn't know. They spent time with Jesus. When they didn't know, they spent time in the Logos. When they didn't know, they followed people who knew, but not to follow those people. To be handed off to Jesus. And when they were handed off to Jesus, they spent time with the rabbi. They spent time with the master. And they let the logos of God tell them. Listen, I just want to say this, and then Marvin's going to give us some music. I just want to say this. If you don't know what it is that satisfies you, if you don't know what it is that quenches your thirst, if you don't know what it is that takes away your hunger pains, if you don't know what it is that gives you calm in a storm, if you don't know what it is that gives you healing when you're hurting, if you don't know how it is that you're wired in Christ, you know you're wired to Christ, but you don't know how it is that you're wired in Christ. You just don't know the functionality of it yet. It's okay because you're never going to fully know. You're always going to be growing more and more into it. And the way to grow more and more into it into it is always going to be the same. Go and spend some time with the Logos. Go and spend some time with the Master. Go and spend some time with the Teacher. Go and spend some time with the Rabbi. Because this guy, he don't know. He didn't design you. The Logos knows. Question on the second week of the year is do you know what you're
glad for the logos of Jesus. Right there, John chapter 1. In the beginning of the story of Jesus, Jesus wants us to start out asking the right question. Do you know what it is that you seek? And I'm reminded of John and James who Jesus told, you have no idea what you're asking for. When they asked to be on the right and the left hand side of him, he said, can you drink the cup that I'm going to drink? Can you be baptized with the baptism that I'm going to be baptized? And they said, yes. And he said, not really, but you will. (laughs) The truth is we never know what we're seeking but we can know the one who has the answers that we haven't even started to ask yet. I said it to you last week. I'm going to say it to you again. Some of you need to make a decision for baptism. Some of you need to make a decision to recommit your life to God. Some of you know who you are. God is calling you today and he is calling you now. And he is saying, I don't want 40% of your life. I don't want 50% of your life. I don't want fractions of your life. I don't want you following people and not me. I want you to know what you're seeking. And if Andrew and the other disciple had not went with Jesus, They would have never known. So here's the thing. Sometimes you've got to take that next step. And you're not going any further until you take that next step. The New Testament would have still unfolded, but very differently if Andrew and James hadn't have said, Master, where are you staying? You see, they were willing to go where Jesus was, not trying to make Jesus go where they were. What about you? On your card. If there's something we can pray about to help you in that journey, we want to pray about it. On your card. If you need profession of faith, if you need baptism, that is on your card. Remember that card that we're all going to fill out in 2018. That's right, Shelby. Look for that card. (laughs) Maybe you need Bible studies because you don't understand what you believe. Maybe you need to come to refresh on Wednesday night and begin to get refreshed in that search. But as Marvin takes us through this last verse, just ask yourself, do you know what you're seeking? Because the answer is in what you're singing. Look full in his wonderful face. 
Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to pray for whoever it is right now in this room, right now is sensing your spirit. Right now, whoever it is in this room who is saying, when I started down the road, is this all there was? Just getting up every morning and going to a job or just looking after the kids and just trying to get from day to day and, you know, maybe getting into church every other week. Is, is this all there is? Let your spirit tug at those strings. Let your spirit bring a room to the place of recommitment. And for someone out there who knows that it's them that is being called for baptism, I don't know who it is. But someone out there knows who it is. Put the conviction heavily on their heart. Let them look at that card one more time. In Jesus' name, amen. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. hallelujah.